Welcome, collectors, and thank you for joining me for this episode of Diecast Emporium. This is going to be a rather lengthy video where we look at my entire collection of HO or 1 to 87 scale wheel loaders. The first two that we'll be taking a look at are from Masto or Masto, and they are the Volvo L25H wheel loaders. So these are two rather new models. Again, they are part of a series of Volvo heavy equipment models that Meso released earlier this year. Some of them are very close to HO scale, and again, although they are targeted more towards younger people as toys, several of them are very close to HO scale, and these are two examples of those. So the L25Hs, one of them is a obviously a standard wheel loader. And the bucket is functional. It will lift up and dump. And the other variation that they made has forks on it. So again, if you are looking for a small version of the L25H, consider picking these up. They are very affordably priced. I think they retail for about $5 or less. They do come in the blister-styled card packaging, so once you open them, you are done in terms of the value. But that aside, they do look very good on the layout or on a dealership parking lot. Moving on. This is a purpose-built HO scale model from about 15 years ago. This is the Norscott K721D loader. Again, a very nice loader in its own right. Good functionality, proper articulation. The arms go high enough to clear most HO scale American style dump trucks. So obviously therein it will clear low-sided European style dump trucks if you're watching this from across the pond. As I mentioned, highly detailed, accurate case paint. And even though these are 15, 16 years old, you can still find them on the secondary market and you won't have to pay an arm and a leg for them. Next model is a brass model. This is the classic construction models CAT IT28G integrated tool carrier. Part of the original 12 set by Classic Construction Models. Again, if you are not familiar with that, go ahead and check out the link at the top of your screen right now. I've done a feature video on that in the past. You can watch that and get yourself educated on uh, how CCM got its start. Very, very nice, high-quality replica. The bucket arms do raise. The bucket will tilt to somewhat of a degree. But again, these brass CCM pieces are really meant to be more display pieces and not necessarily functional pieces. But if you were looking for a great piece to represent the integrated tool carrier on your layout, this is one you're definitely going to want to hunt down and add. And in terms of pieces of the 12-piece original brass set, this is one that's still, it's going to be well over $100. But in terms of what some of the other ones go for now, uh, this one is actually not too unreasonable if you just want to track this one down individually and not try and find a complete 12-piece set. Next model is another Volvo model, this time from MotorArt. It is the L60E. There are a few different versions of this wheel loader out there. This is obviously the standard bucket wheel loader, but there's also one that comes with forks uh, and an integrated tool carrier arm that I believe they actually released as the Volvo L60 and the Volvo L90. My understanding is, although I don't have an L90 to directly compare it to in my collection yet, I believe they are both just the same casting with different decals on them. If somebody does have an L90, please correct me on that, specifically if you do have an L60 and an L90. But again, I think the main difference is just the attachments. Overall, profile-wise, very good-looking loader. Many Maintenance of Ways fleets have L60s and L90s. So again, if you're looking for that loader for your MOW fleet on your railroad, this is a very inexpensive option for you. And I always like the factory beacon lights that come with any of the wheel loaders. Next up, we have a discontinued Aethern model. This is the John Deere 624J. I know it's hard to believe, but back in the day, Aethern did produce a number of models for John Deere, both in the agricultural sector and in the construction sector. The 624J was one of the construction ones they produced. They also produced a 650 dozer uh, and a grader, as well as a backhoe loader, if memory serves me correct. Again, a very high functional model, high detailed rubber tires, proper articulation, mirrors, grab rails, uh, silver exhaust. And I believe this is the only example of a John Deere loader that I have in my collection. It may be one of the only John Deere models in HO scale. 
that has been made, at least mass-produced, and available to the collector market. All right, we still got quite a while to go. That's why I'm trying to move this along. This is uh, not one of the best pieces I have in my collection, and that was before it ended up falling off of a table. So this has really kind of been in my shop to do a little bit of repairs. This is the Hobby and Works Publishing New Holland W190B. There is a W270 out there. Um, very basic wheel loader model here. Very fragile as well, especially with the Z-Bar linkage that are known to break and snap. But if you are a New Holland fan, there are a couple loaders out there. This is one of them. But again, just be warned that they are extremely fragile. The Z-Bar linkage did break when this fell off a table. Obviously, anything is going to break on any model if it falls off a table. Um, but to be fair, they are known, any of the Hobby and Works publishing models, again, to be fair, uh, or HWP models, are known to be extremely fragile. But they also are held at a very affordable price point, many of them under the $25 U.S. range. Okay. The only example of a Komatsu wheel loader that I have in my collection, and they do make a very large uh, mining wheel loader as a plastic Kibi crit, and they also make a couple uh, very high-end brass Komatsu loaders. But this is the shareholder wheel loader that Komatsu produced a number of years ago. Every year, they will bring out a 187 scale piece of Komatsu construction equipment as their shareholder gift. I believe this was the 2016 or 2017 edition, and uh, it is specifically the WA380 wheel loader. Each and every year, they put everything into these shareholder gifts. Very, very highly detailed replicas, great functionality. They are very expensive, and oftentimes you do have to buy them from a Japanese buyer on the secondary market, but uh, they are worth it. I know that actually this year I am still waiting to get my gift from Komatsu, uh, from the Komatsu seller that I purchased it from on eBay because, as we all know, there are issues going on currently with international shipping that is out of everybody's control. But uh, unfortunately... I don't know if I will be getting mine before the end of the year, but hopefully at some point when international shipping resumes from Japan to the U.S., I'll be able to show you this year's edition. But if you want a Komatsu wheel loader again, I would very much recommend tracking one of these down. So again, if you guys have not figured this out, I'm going in somewhat uh, order by size, machine size. So next up, we have the Norscott Caterpillar 966G Series 2. This is about an 18, 19-year-old model. Holds up very well even today. When this came out, it was very functional for its time, very detailed with its time, including the hand and grab rails, which a lot of HO scale models, particularly die-cast HO scale models, didn't really have back in 2002. But, um, again, very nice decals even underneath on the red line, say Series 2 on this and the next one that I'll show you. And it really is just a very nice piece. And this stayed in the lineup all the way until the uh, 66Ks were introduced well, uh, well, 10 years later, 10, 11 years later. So, again, a very impressive length of time for this to stay in the cat catalog. Okay, so they made this one, and then they made the 966G forestry machine. Main difference, of course, being the log grapple on the front. And you will see the current version of this that is available here in a few more models by Diecast Masters, but this was the original Norse got one. Basic 966 Series 2 um, casting with, again, just the log grapple being the main difference. And again, this is all die cast, not plastic. So again, it held up very well. And even though these are nearing 20 years old, the cylinders still hold up well, and they don't bleed down over time. Okay. Fast forward to 2013-ish, 2014-ish, when Tonkin Replicas held a license to produce cap models for a very short period of time. One of their primary focus was the wheel loader sector in the Caterpillar market, and they made tons of wheel loaders in both 150 scale and 187, which is HO scale. This is the 966K, the standard version. Honestly, these HO models were very nice, aside from the fact that some of them did come 
um, damaged, whether it would be the plastic hand and grab rails broken off, the antennas that were broken off, uh, or even some of the Z-Bar linkage that wasn't really installed properly on the first run of the models. But other than that, honestly, they were pretty high quality and very nice. I enjoyed them, for uh, if my opinion is worth anything. So they made the 966K standard version. Then they made this version, which is the 966K XE for advanced drivetrain. Now this has a couple extras that I installed aftermarket, so it doesn't come like this. I put a beacon light up on top, and then it has a warning triangle on the back. But again, basic, same casting as a 966, only difference is the decal that distinguishes this as the XE version. The third version that they did is the 972, okay, which is right here. So we're going slightly out of order just to show you all three of the Tonkins in a row. So those were the three Tonkin replicas loaders produced in 187 scale for CAT. Again, around 2013, end of 2013, beginning of 2014. They were very much a commercial success initially when they first came out. Particularly, again, in the train market. All right. So this is that basic casting that was updated and retooled once Diecast Masters took over as the sole licensee to produce mass quantities of cat models in 2015, and they redid it as a 966M. Now you'll notice that the antenna has been removed, the body back end has been retooled a little bit, and they also changed the style bucket. So you had a rehandling bucket on the original. This has a rock bucket with teeth on it. Again, just to show you the difference, we'll put both of them on here. So you can get a good view of the main difference. And obviously they also added an operator figure in the cab. So they not only produced a retooled version of the 966, they went from the 966K to the 966M, but they also retooled the 972 and went from the 972K to the 972M. Again, different bucket, larger bucket, and a larger counterweight on the end as well to accommodate that larger bucket. And we still have our operator figure in the cab as well. And then just recently within the past year or so, as I alluded to a little while ago in the video, they also did a 972M forestry machine version with the log grapple. All right. So this was kind of an oddball. And yes, technically it is not 187 scale. I believe they advertised this as either 190th or 191 scale. But for me, it's close enough. This is the Toy State Cat 980K. Now, it doesn't come weathered. This was one of my first trials on weathering. I weathered up the bucket a little bit, colored in the venting on the back, added a little H for the stairs, did a little bit of work on the lights. But uh, this is the original version. And then I purchased another where I added some forks on the front of it. So that's the Toy State Cat 980K. They sold these for a couple years at Toys R Us and Target, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe a couple other places. And there was a few models in that line around roughly HO scale, including a 320E excavator and some sort of a... Some sort of a dozer, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe a D7E comes to mind. But they were built quite well. And again, affordably priced somewhere between $5 and $6. So I remember buying two of these. All right, we are nearing the end. This is the first gear Volvo L180H wheel loader. Again, another new addition to the collection came out early part of 2020. Another commercial success in the collector market. Decent range of functionality. A little bit higher than average level of detail. And it sold very well that it was soon followed within a couple months with a variation of the L180. 
80H. And here it is. This is the waste handler version. And if you have seen my most recent video, or one of my most recent videos on the channel, the HO Recycling and Sanitation Collection, you will be very familiar with this model. Again, if you haven't, you can look at the top of the screen and check out that video right now if you wish to. But again, both of these by First Gear, both new releases in 2020. Pretty decent looking models. And uh, very nice to have a waste handling type loader in the collection. So this is about as basic as basic gets in terms of 187 scale. This is a Kerarama Volvo L150C wheel loader. There's been a number of different companies that have had this tooling really over the past 20 years. This is the most recent release. This is a standard, obviously, wheel loader, bucket loader configuration. And they also released a milliard arrangement by Kerarama. So there's both of those. See if they can stay on the table without rolling off, which they tend to do. But two very nice examples, nonetheless, of the Volvo L150C, which again is a older, much older machine, but you'll still occasionally see them out and about. Okay. This is an IMC Models Hyundai HL. 980 wheel loader. This, along with an excavator, was released oh, probably three or four years ago already. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago. Uh, INC Models is known for releasing high-quality replicas, very expensive replicas. And uh, to see them dive into the HO scale construction sector with these two was really out of left field. So I picked up both of these, the wheel loader and the excavator. Was pleasantly surprised to see that it had a decent range of functionality. High quality pad printing of decals, rubber tires, really everything you'd expect in this day and age. Not quite so sure it's worth what their asking price was, especially when you factored in shipping and everything. What if you are into out of left field um, original equipment manufacturers such as Hyundai? then uh, this might be one you want to add to your collection and track down. Now for those that are into the classic iron, this one is for you. This is the First Gear International Har Harvester 560 Payloader. This is another one, another model by First Gear that has been made in a few different variations and paint colors, including Sunrise Mining, which is a striking paint scheme. This is the factory, obviously, International Harvester paint scheme for this, but the, the Sunrise Mining in particular is a very striking and very nice paint scheme on this loader. Very large. We're getting up there into mining size wheel loaders now as we begin to conclude the video. This model, again, is probably upwards of a decade and a half old now, getting close to it, but even holds up well against today models in terms of standard quality and detail. Certainly it's hefty as well with a lot of die cast compared to plastic parts on it. Going the other way on that spectrum, this is almost an entirely plastic piece. This is by Wyking, and uh, this is the Volvo L350F wheel loader. Two versions of this, to my knowledge, have been made, one with the operator in the cab, and I believe later on they made a version without the operator in the cab, which kind of makes me wish I would have waited for the second release to happen. But this is the original with our operator friend in the cab. Obviously, as you can see, it's very much in a hurry to be out of the spotlight and roll off the spinny table. Again, can't emphasize this enough. As you'll see often with Wiking, mo Wiking models, they're almost entirely all made of what they call high-quality plastic, but uh, that does allow for a little bit more detail than you might see on some all die-cast components. It's not a bad representation of a large wheel loader, and you can certainly build up a large mining fleet of these for a relatively low price, especially when we start talking about hunting down some of the old museum-quality CCM mining pieces that you're about to see in just a few seconds. So let's conclude the video 
with the two largest and without question the two nicest models of wheel loaders that I have in my collection in HO scale. This is the CCM Caterpillar 992G wheel loader. Again, one of the original 12 pieces in the set. I don't know what else I can say about these. If you guys have watched my videos for any length of time, particularly if you have watched the original 12 video where I explain everything, if you consider yourself either a die cast, a brass, a heavy equipment fan, if you are at all able to, somewhere in your collecting career, track down an original 12 set, you will not be disappointed. These replicas done in brass by CCM, and we're talking about late 90s, early 2000s by the time they completed the set, are unbelievable. The quality and just realism that went into these. And once you display them behind glass, it doesn't matter what else you're displaying. When you have friends, coworkers, whoever comes over, they are instant attention grabbers just because of the unbelievable, whether it's hydraulic line, whether it's small lights, mirrors, whatever, CCM didn't miss an inch on these. So this is the 992G. If you were to track this down individually, this will probably run you well north currently of $1,500 easily, very easily. Um, I believe it was number 11 of the 12-piece set. Could be wrong on that, but it was one of the last two releases in the 12-piece set. So it's either 11 or 12. Just an amazing replica of the 992G. So after the 12-piece set was released, CCM throughout the next few years, they would continue to add on to that legacy by releasing subsequent 187 scale brass models. This was one of them. And to conclude the video, I present to you the CCM Caterpillar 994D mining loader. You want to talk about, again, a throughout the phase, attention grabber, centerpiece model. This is it. Check out the exhaust, the air cleaners, the little lights, the mirrors, everything on this. The bolt detailing on the rims. Again, this is all done up in brass. It's not die cast. Just absolutely incredible. So there you have it, collectors. We'll let this spin around a few times while I do the conclusion on this video. But to date, that is my current collection entirely of 187 or HO scale wheel loaders. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know down in the comment section below if this is a series you would like me to continue. I plan on doing a couple more of these, but depending on the reaction from you guys, the viewers, and the fans, will dictate if I end up finishing out this series. So let me know if you want to see more collection updates in 187 scale. I truly enjoy doing them, but uh, what really matters if it's worth the time and effort, is if you guys enjoy them. As always, I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care, be safe. I'll see you in the next review.